Hey, everybody, this is TJR. Over the last business quarter, Spotify Music Streaming Services reported 172 million subscribers. Apple Music reported 745 million subscribers, although there is some contention as to how many of those are actual paid subscribers. Amazon Music reported 32 million subscribers. However, I should point out that Amazon doesn't separate out its Amazon Prime subscribers like myself, who have Amazon Music bundled with their Prime subscription and at no additional cost versus those who pay extra to have access to the Amazon Unlimited music service. Now, by way of comparison, Tidal Music is estimated to be somewhere between 1 million to 5 million subscribers. This is significantly less than all the other streaming services I just mentioned. And for this reason, I do get asked from time to time, why am I subscribing to Tidal? Why not use one of the other major services I've just mentioned? Well, I thought I might talk about that in this video and discuss my experiences with these services. And I would invite you to tell me about your experiences as well. So before we get started here, if you'd like to see more video content like this, please first click like. This is the only way that the YouTube algorithm recognizes me. I would also love it if you subscribe, and I would recommend that you smash the bell notification icon so you never miss a video. Okay, so let's get started. Now, first of all, there's Spotify, which was the first major entry into the streaming world of music. I initially subscribed to Spotify when it first came out. Now, Spotify's main carrot in front of consumers, so to speak, is their free tier. There is, of course, also the $9.99 monthly tier as well. Now, the free tier is fine if you are okay with commercials and you have no problem with limitations on how often you get to listen to a track or how often you are allowed to skip over tracks you are not in the mood to hear. This isn't fine with me, so it was worth it to me to spend just $9.99 a month and have access to a gigantic, enormous, seemingly limitless universe library of music through streaming without those restrictions. So I subscribed to Spotify. Not too long after that, Tidal came along. Now, early into this experience, I did actually subscribe to both Spotify and title simultaneously so that I could compare them back and forth and see which one I like the best. I chose title over Spotify for the following reasons. One, title's standard service, which was the same price as Spotify's, offered better audio quality than Spotify. I should point out that when title premiered, it was the only streaming service to offer high resolution music streaming, but you had to pay extra for it. Their standard service was $9.99. Their hi-fi service was $19.99. I did not pay for the hi-fi service. I paid for the standard service, but I will say that the standard service back then still sounded better than what Spotify offered for the same price. So that was number one. Number two, Tidal's recommendation programming, in my opinion, was hands down better at recommending new music and new music artists to me. When it came to music recommendations, I felt like Tidal gets me and that Spotify didn't. Now, recently, Apple Music became the first streaming service to offer high resolution music audio streaming at no additional charge. As a result of this, Tidal dropped the upcharge for their hi fi service to all of their hi fi subscribers and upgraded everybody who is at their standard service to the hi fi audio at no additional charge. But even before all this, I had no qualms with Apple Music sound quality when I compared it to Tidal. However, to this day, I will not subscribe to Apple Music. And here's why. My problem with Apple's music streaming service has nothing to do with audio. It has to do with the fact that their service wants to mess with my personal physical library that I have synced to my mobile device. I am old school. I still buy CDs. I buy vinyl records. I have a huge CD collection that I have ripped to my hard drive and that I have synced 
using Apple's iTunes. Now it's called music, of course. I still buy CDs and I still rip them as I buy them. And in addition, I digitize my vinyl collection and sync that to the mobile device as well so that I can have my music anywhere. When I use Tidal Streaming Service, it is a separate thing from my personal music library. Tidal doesn't mess with it. But Apple Music Streaming Service does. When Apple Music premiered, they offered three months free to get acquainted. I subscribed, and much to my surprise, afterwards, I discovered that Apple Music was, in a lot of cases, replacing my personal music library with iCloud versions. These iCloud versions sometimes got the listings wrong. They would sometimes change the album titles or the album art. Oftentimes, if I had something that was obscure in my collection and Apple's service didn't recognize it or understand what it was, it would change that title to the closest thing that it had in their iCloud library. I was infuriated with this. And so I canceled Apple streaming music immediately. And then I resynced my entire music collection from the drive and restored it back to the way it was on my Apple Music and synced it to my mobile device and just moved on. I was pleased with the audio quality that Apple Music offered when I compared it to Tidal. And had I had some time to work with it, I would imagine that Apple's recommendation AI was probably as good as Tidal's more than likely. And I'm going to guess probably better than Spotify's. But Apple's invasive attitude towards my personal music library was such an immediate deal breaker that there was no way I was even going to consider switching until they chose to change this part of their service, which to this date, they haven't. Now, you may be asking, what about Amazon Music? Well, when I made the decision to go with Tidal exclusively, Amazon was not offering a music service. And since then, I have heard absolutely nothing about Amazon's music service that would really entice me to even try the much more limited music service I already get bundled with my Amazon Prime membership or pay the upcharge for their unlimited service. Now, perhaps one day I will put it to the test, so to speak, but I feel pretty strongly that while its audio quality will probably be on a par with all the other services out there, I think it's more than likely that their recommendation service will be lacking more than likely. Now, I welcome comments from anybody who wants to dispute those presumptions, but only if you have actually made direct A to B comparisons between Amazon Music and any of the other services that we're talking about today. So those are my thoughts. Please share me yours. How has your experience been with streaming? What services have you tried? Which one do you prefer? And have you ever done any back-to-back -back comparisons? Looking forward to hearing what you have to say. I want to take a moment now to thank my patron supporters who are helping me make more videos. If you'd like to be a patron supporter, please go to patreon.com slash TJR, the original. And if you can't be a patron supporter, just click like. That helps a great deal. Everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.